Hello, everybody. What is this, Pedro? Hey, everybody. This is the Adafruit Show and Tell. This is the place where everybody comes to show off their awesome projects that they're working on. Maybe your worker space or your kid's project or any artwork or any 3D printing, sewing, wearables. Everything is game. Let's go ahead and take a couple of minutes to show off all the awesome work that you guys are working on. We'll start off with Kevin from DigiKey. And hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, guys. I have a special guest with me today. This is my daughter, Avery. So today she Hello, wanted to start talking about the upcoming holiday, which is Valentine's Day. So we're going to show you a little bit about the project she's working on. So let's get started. Yeah. What did you do here? Um, I So we cut a hole and then it wasn't big enough for the, bu the bucket. And then we cut a bigger hole and then it... It was perfect, and then we dug our hands into it and put on the um the stuffing. Yeah, we took our st the stuffing, and then we did Here. that eye, and then we did this, so it lights up when you drop it in. So this was programmed with the Yay. the Circuit Playground Express, and she programmed it with Make Code, which is such a fun block-based editor for kids to use. It was really cool. And then the eyes. <laughs> so that what do we do so with the eyes? Adorable. So we used the um, monster mask and put it in because it was, there's a hole was already open. So we put it in with the hole in the hole. And then her favorite color is purple. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but the eyes twinkle and they're purple. We wanted to make the, um, these things Hearts. We want. We still might do a little tweaking to make some more hearts to it. But this is her Valentine's project. Started out a little fluffy teddy bear. Now it's a cooler fluffy teddy bear. <laughs> oh, that is so cute. That is such a great idea. I love how you didn't even have to split the monster mask eyes apart. It like fits perfect. It like it was designed to fit inside of a bear. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> it was perfect. Effect. And you know the the convex lenses that you guys or that Adafruit sells we have on oh, DigiKey that's as in well. Too. So oh, putting okay. the convex yeah, lens, it just makes the good. eyes look so much more real. Yeah, yeah, you were saying that it makes it look the uh, little shine reflection effect makes it look like it's real. <laughs> and I love yeah. the purple shader that's on there. Yeah, that's great. Ah, oh, so cute. Well, that, I know definitely a lot more cooler really? than the Valentine's that we had. <laughs> yeah. right. And you well, get to use like the extra cool. batting that was inside the bear. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, we'll have to do something right. with that, won't we? The All the Maybe extra a pillow or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank right. you so That's much great for showing. Great work, Avery. You're awesome. welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Take care, guys. Avery. Yep. Thanks so much. That was so cute. All right. Next up, we're going to check in with Jeff. Jeff, you want to get your stuff ready? We'll uh, get you here started. If you want to show any screens, you can go ahead and get that started as well. Here we go. Let's jump in All right. What Jeff is up to. Well, um, for 2021, one of the new hobbies I decided to take up was circuit sculpture. And so this is my second circuit sculpture. Got a Pico here, got some NeoPixels here, but basically uh, you have to create a shape with a uh, brass rod and then solder it all up and run a little software with it. So it's showing rainbow patterns, which is a little hard to see. But uh, yeah, circuit sculpture is a fun little discipline. Uh, kind of increase your skills at soldering and you know, create something maybe that's pretty. So I'm gonna finish this up by putting the board kind of inside the circle and then figure out how to hang it on the wall. That's the idea. And it'll just do rainbows. Yeah, that's awesome. Did you use like a like a printed rig or something to get that the circle mm -hmm. shape? Yeah. So it's ruined now because uh, the plastic stuck to it in parts, but I created a 3D printed jig that I could lay the rod in and give it the bend that I needed and lay oh. all of those floor LEDs in it. And this is like based Brilliant. on various ideas that I've run into online and uh, yeah, I just can't wait to come up with another good idea and figure out how to do it. So that's so awesome. I, I recommend you check yeah. out. I will drop a guy's link, a link to a guy who has done a presentation about this in the Discord if you want to learn more, because that's kind of where I got started. Yeah, Excellent. I think we know who you're talking about. I like the little jigs and stuff they use for that. It's yeah. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That's great. Definitely want to get in that. It's so right. cool. Awesome. Well, it's beautiful. Yeah. Thanks, All right. Jeff. That's what Hi, I Jeff. got. See you later. Thank you. 
All right, next up, we're gonna check in with Dan. Dan, if you want to get your stuff ready, we'll Dan uh, get you started. A really cool hack on figuring out how to get uh, to figure out which pins are on the Pico. All right, so this is like the lowest tech thing. <laughs> it's super useful though. Yeah. So these are this is a Raspberry Pi Pico, which uh, we're fond of, very fond of right now. But if you look at it, it really it, the it doesn't have any pin labels on top except. It labels pins one and two and pin 39 or something. It's like, well, which pin is which? And I have to count, this is terrible. If you look on the on the bottom, it's got a lot of information, but if you put something in the breadboard, you can't see it and you can't put the, you can't put the uh, headers on upside down because the button is on the top. Yeah. So it's like, ah. So yeah. I was starting to wire something up with one of these and I got really frustrated. You can use one of these charts there you can print out on the web but i said that's i already have trouble like when i look at things now because i'm in my 60s i don't focus close since so i have to wear out like one of these things all the oh. time <laughs> to see what's going on like i have i have 20 20 vision six feet and greater in front of me but not not six inches in front of me yeah. so what i did is i said well why don't i take this 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 paper thing and then i'll just shrink it and i'll put it um <laughs> Underneath, I'll punch. I'll, I'll I'll make it exactly the same size as um, the Raspberry Pi Pico, and just have this underlay underneath here. And it does cover up the pins on the breadboard or the holes on the breadboard. But you can figure out where they are. You can if you just poke with a jumper, you can find the holes really easily. Yeah. So now I have this great thing that labels all the pins completely. It looks a little funny, but if I want another one, I'll just print one. And all I did was take the PDF of this original thing and did a little measuring and said, oh, it looks like it's about 55 and a half percent. And I just, yeah. I just printed, I just put that number in the print dialog box. That's all. That's so you can try this. Yeah. So I'll, 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 uh, I'll put a link into about this, about this in the, in the live, in live broadcast chat and um, maybe put it on Twitter too. And John Park, did something similar but much much more sophisticated he can show that later if you want <laughs> all right yeah it's such a it. brilliant like low tech uh way to solve that problem even with the pins on the back i still get it wrong because the way it's offset you know because mm. that the standoff the hole is right step, there the mounting yeah. hole i still get it wrong so it's like dang it <laughs> yes all right well, yeah, thank you for the tip dan that was great you're welcome okay thanks dan all right Next up is JP. All right, JP, if you want to get your stuff ready, we'll get you in here and we'll get started. Right That's on. Hey, guys. Pico I, themed project. Yeah, you know, first I got to say, I love how the one of the defining things about the Pico, much like one of the defining things about the Arduino was the weird pin header spacing. <laughs> now one of the defining things about Pico, like add-ons and stuff is like, how are you going to solve? We can't see what pin we're talking about. Right. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> And, and maybe there that'll is. change in the future, but but it is fun to, <laughs> to try to solve that. Uh, I actually, uh, the project I'm working on today, and I'm going to be showing this on, uh, I'll show it in a second, I'll be showing this on the workshop show tomorrow and, and building this yes. and doing a, a project. I actually do have like a real minimal version of one of those Pico hacks on it. Uh, and I, I can probably show that up close tomorrow. I don't think you'll see it today, but I'll put that <clears> up. Yeah, definitely uh, everybody so tune in for that. Is one of these um, sort of demo boards We've done this sort of thing before when we did Cricut, we, we built a big cardboard demo board so that we could uh, show a bunch of different motors, essentially types of motors running. So you can see I've got solenoid, servo, uh, DC motor and a stepper here. And then I've got a couple buttons and I'm laying this out maybe on, uh, I might do it this way in the end, a few breadboards so that things aren't all crammed together. So we can show like, here's the, the little MOSFET that drives our solenoid and I've got a little, uh, H bridge motor driver here for this. And I've got a uh, stepper driver here. So I'm kind of laying all these things out and it is all being run off of this Pico, uh, which is running in circuit Python. Uh, the buttons right now, actually, these are some lit arcade buttons that we uh, have. And what I've done is I've just run them off of the DC five volts that's powering everything. So they're not, they're, their lighting isn't anything that the Pico is controlling. They're just on um, but what I did is this red one is uh, gonna ground the reset button because uh, there's not a reset button on the Pico. So when I press this, that's gonna restart the code. Uh, and now you'll see it's gonna go through and do a few of the different uh, little 
startup tests that I have. So I test out the solenoid. I test out this little servo motor here. Uh, it's going to do like a little gradual step thing to zero and again to 180. Uh, then we'll run the motor forward and backward at a couple of different speeds. And then finally, we'll start spinning our little uh, stepper again there. So uh, what I may do, and uh, if I get this done tonight, I'll, I'll show this on the workshop show tomorrow, is use this blue button for something, because right now it doesn't do a darn thing. It's fun to push. Uh, but what I may do is have it step between the different demos. So you can have it just running one of them until you hit the blue button and then move on to the next one. So, um, and the idea behind this, of course, is to, to create some nice fundamental how-tos that people can reference when they probably don't want to put all these things into one project, but maybe one or two. And they're just looking for, hey, what's some sort of simple CircuitPython code that I can use to run a DC motor? And I'll, I'll include that in there. So it'll be little snippets and little descriptions of how these things work. So uh, it's all built on a couple slices of foam core that I glued together. And I stuck a Raspberry Pi logo on there for style points. So uh, that's, that's what I got. That's awesome. I've been waiting for this, actually, when I heard you uh, working on it. It's like, oh, I need that servo code. <laughs> this right is on. great. Good, good. Uh, yeah, and David, actually, I, I mentioned, you, like I said, you might not be able to see it, but what I did on this particular Pico to understand what was what is I used white header pins and I painted the um, voltage pins red oh. and the ground ones black so I can at least see them kind of oh. from the side of the breadboard. Um, so that's one version of, yeah. of the different... Um, tricks I've used and the one visualizer. That, yeah. Yeah. A little visualizer. The one that Dan mentioned, I've shown this before on, on show and tell it. I'll show it yeah, again. This is too. one where I uh, added some 90 degree header pins, two sets of them. So there's, there's, it comes out at a right angle, then back down at a right angle. Uh, and then I taped a little printout that I did with, uh, with some of the pin, pin IDs on there. That's my favorite one to use because it's on a breadboard. I can see what's what. Um, and plug straight into it as if humans were meant to use these things to break their projects. <laughs> no, that's great. I like how it's turning into like the Pico header tip oh. tower. This is great. <laughs> and no, and no offense to the Raspberry Pi. We love we, what you've done. This yeah. is I was uh, saying, we uh, Pico about yeah, yeah. the little <laughs> I think it, degree thing here. Yeah, my three D print something. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, we're done. All right. <laughs> All right, thanks, well, thanks, John. John. Everybody, don't forget to yeah, tune in the show to, tomorrow. Tune, tomorrow. Right on. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks, thanks so much, guys. See you. And, all, right. all right, next up, we're checking with Scott. If you want to get ready, and uh, I'll call you up. I'm just going to call it out. Yeah. Another Pico theme project, this time with audio. Hello. Oh, this one too, I cannot wait for. Yeah, spoilers. So uh, I'm one of the lucky folks. I actually have a prototype oh. feather for the RP2040 there. Uh, don't mind the cat hair, if you can see any cat hair. Um, but what I've got set up here is actually a Stemma speaker. And if I just hit the reset button, then I'm going to move it back so you can hear it. Um, so the scratchy like record player sound is not deliberate, even though if, if you like that, <laughs> good for you. Uh, it's because the way that it's happening is it's it's done using PWM. And I'm not an analog person, so I'm literally just like directly doing the digital signals into the speaker. Uh, you can use a low pass filter, I think is the right term, uh, to make it sound a lot better. But uh, I'll play it again just because it is a short, it's a short clip. Use it's actually the boot up for the uh, Jet Player example, so it's playing a wave file from the from the file system there uh, using PWM, uh, which is what I've been working on. And uh, I2S should come shortly after that, and I2S will be uh, better quality too, hopefully. So I'll just show awesome. you yeah, another one I've been waiting for. Yeah, great progress. Yeah, yeah there's, there's another look yeah, at cool. it. Cool, and I can't wait for that feather. Yeah, me too. I know it's it, it's really nice. I I use it. I've been doing all my development on it, so it's it's super solid. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. Excited to see new boards. I've got I've got work to do before we can have a lot of boards in Circuit Python. So that, <laughs> that'll be exciting. <laughs> Cool. And then you'll have a lot more cool stuff on your show on Friday. So everybody, please tune into that as well. Yeah, take take questions, and we'll definitely go over the audio work, and uh, yes. then talk about probably the the stuff I have to do for more boards. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Always a fun time. Uh, Thanks, Scott. Yeah, it'll right. be good. Thank you. Get, All right, Scott. Catch you later. All right, next up, we're going to jump in with Mark Gambler. If you want to get ready, we'll check in and say hello. And I think by popular popular request from Mark, you got to do a jump a drum roll. <laughs> right now, okay. <laughs> Hi, Here's Mark. Mark. Mark, here we go. <laughs> hey, Mark. For you, Mark. Thanks a lot. That's the best intro I have ever done. <laughs> uh, 
I'm going to share my screen here. Uh, if you guys can show it. So I've been working on something. When I noticed there was the example in the Pico about uh, building a logic analyzer. Oh. So while I was doing some work for CircuitPython, uh, I don't have a logic analyzer. So I thought this is a good time to try it out. Uh, so this is just a picture showing the setup. Um, nice. The Pico at the top is just hooked up to a BME sensor. It was hooked up to a NeoPixel strip earlier. And I've now modified the example. Uh, I don't think I can make Putty go any bigger, unfortunately. Oh, no, I can um, OK. Uh, so yeah, you can now set. I want to capture starting in pin 17, two pins. Mm -hmm. Uh, at two megahertz, um, huh. trigger on, I think, low, and go. And now when I go to the circuit Python running on that other one, all I have to do is start it. And of course, it's not working because things are live. Yeah. Um, ah. But whatever. Uh, I wasn't going to. All you'll see is a lot of data streaming here, which then you'd have to capture uh, through Putty does that. There's lots of software to do it. But then the best part is you can pull it into pulse view. Nice. Uh, so I captured this earlier. You can put the I2C decoder on it. And now I can see everything uh, that came out uh, right from the Pico and now see it easily uh, in a graphic format. Uh, this was. Uh, NeoPixel earlier. You can just throw oh. the decoder oh, wow. on it, tell it which pin had it, and there's all the data I was sending to the wow. NeoPixels. Nice. Uh, it works Maybe. amazing. It can work up to the full chip frequency. So I was capturing at uh, 125 megahertz, which is more data. I think the sample was at like for WS2. 2812, it's like huge overkill. Uh, but yeah, so $4 and you can have a logic analyzer now. How <laughs> freaking cool. That's awesome. It sounds like so, yeah. uh, something that Scott would do, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So right, yeah, man, I'm cool. hoping to uh, post up the code tomorrow. I was just going to say, whenever you have the link to it, please post it. All right. Cool. Yeah. Wait, we're Mark, sure. All right. So Thanks for checking Mark. in. We'll check with you next time. Then. I think he deserves Thanks an outro for that, too. Right. Uh, <laughs> what would an outro be? There you go. <laughs> it's like more like a joke. Uh, not a joke. No, <laughs> Thanks so much, That's Mark. all I got. Fine. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Next up is? All right. Next up, we'll check with Timon. All right. Timon, if you want to get ready, we'll, uh, we'll, get, we'll bring you in here. And here we go. Hey. Hey. Hello. Hi. I also have yet another Pico project. Um, Oh, surprise. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's actually it was already on the newsletter, but um, yeah, I found these oh, yes. on, yes. on AliExpress, which are quite cheap. And normally these only have like uh, white and warm white LEDs in them. But I've seen in the product picture that they had RGB in there and it wasn't just one color, but it was multiple yeah, well, pixels. And that got me quite intrigued. So I ordered one and um, yeah, it turns out it's just yeah, new pixels in here basically uh, or something compatible. And um, I, I ripped out the original controller, which is uh, this focus is yeah. I don't know what I see that was before, but yeah, also some just some microcontroller and some MOSFETs um, because yeah, this is white and RGB, so it has like one not smart um, LED ring in here that just does normal photovoltaic white, and I then hacked in into the controller housing uh, at Pico, which I can show you after the demo. I don't want to <laughs> damage it and does focus, but I will show you later. I'll just show it to you. And let's see if that will be visible. So I think the, yeah, my lights will drown this out. So let me turn them off here. And I think the best effect for this, if you actually use it as a photo light, um, put it up to my face. Yeah, really cool. <laughs> they get that really cool ring in the eyes. Yeah. 
Uh, I really like how this looks. Not an um, Instagram filter. <laughs> Hashtag no filter. And I think it's really cool for like if you do movie stuff. Like it, it's it's quite sci-fi. Yeah, totally. Uh, Holy it's, crap! Yeah, it completely changes the mood. Yeah, or the theming of it. It's yeah. really helmet. nice. So yeah, this was really fun, and um, I can quickly. So this runs, of course, Circuit Python, and um, oh, of course, clicked the wrong button and closed my file. One second. I want to show and as you, you mentioned, this was on the newsletter. So if people missed it, definitely make sure to subscribe to that so you can get all the latest on all the cool projects that are posted every week. This is one of them. Yeah, it also does. Uh, this is PWM dimming of just like the normal photo light. And you can mix these two, of course, together. Um, and also has a warm light in there. So this is really quite versatile for like, I don't know, whatever you want to make um, and requires a ring light that does a lot of stuff. Yeah, like excellent as like zoom camera. It looks like all you need is a like some sort of mount to put on top of your monitor display wherever your camera is. It's great. Yeah, great find yeah, for sure. Yeah, and all I can right. quickly show you what that looks inside. So I wanted to find a way to, um, like I, I can I want to make a PCB that like fits well in here, but I want to find out a way for like people to reproduce this quite easily. So I um, looked at the Pico because that fits in here quite well. And I actually milled a little PCB that reproduces like the button layout of the original board. And um, I'll take this up completely. You can see here Pico on the back. And the funny thing was that like you, you can see these pins in here, these pegs, and they are the exact spacing of um, the two holes next to the USB of the Pico. Huh. <laughs> wow. So that, that fits like in perfectly. Lottery. So it's that just, is crazy. I can just, yeah, snap fit this together. And, That's great. Uh, yeah. Dude, yeah, so, that uh, is very easy. Nice. And everyone can solder this. You just need some side cutters and then you can huh. hack it in there. I will put I up totally my PCB files this. for that. And, oh, and, yeah, okay. Yeah, you can order yeah, that from GLC yeah. actually with like SD assembly and stuff for quite cheap. So okay. Hopefully, very accessible. Very cool. Hack. Yeah, I definitely want to do this. This is awesome. Such a great way to light things up. You know? <laughs> nice. yeah, thank you so much. All right, Timon, thank you so much for sharing that. We'll uh, check in with you next time. Yeah. All right, next up, we uh, are going to check in with Eteni. If you'd like to get ready, uh, we'll get you going here. Hello and welcome. Hey. Hey, guys. How's it going? Uh, we're doing all right. How are you doing? doing? Good. Um, it, it's pronounced Etienne. Sorry. It's a French name. Oh, so that's yeah. 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 Sorry. Uh, so I am coming from uh, a pop-up maker space we made here in uh, Richmond, Virginia, about a little, little less than a year ago in April, uh, to make PPE for local healthcare and essential workers. And by the end of April, we had pulled together close to 50 volunteer makers from the Richmond area, um, some of them 3D printing, some of them coming in here to our shop and uh and producing face shields and other ppe equipment and uh, i wanted to show you we've got a small ender 3 print farm we've set up this past weekend that's uh that's making these uh these little head straps for putting behind uh face masks and holding the holding the straps off your ears and we've also we just hit our thirty-five thousand face shield mark um, we've been producing, we've been producing these reusable um, uh, foam pad style face shields here in the shop, um, and we've gotten a, our process nailed down to where we're doing it about a face shield every thirty seconds with just uh, just about two or three volunteers working it. So, um, so yeah, just wanted to like show you guys what we've been doing. We've been very inspired by by Adafruit and all of the local maker groups here in Richmond that have reached out and supported us this past year. That is awesome. Excellent. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that's an awesome uh, your space there and all the pictures. Thank great. you. Yeah. It's, a, it's amazing when you push yourself, especially with like off-the-shelf 3D printers. Uh, here, I'll, let me go back here and show you our queue. Um, how we've actually built a community around learning 3D printing um, this is this is our assembly queue right here, and you can see um, shield shield brim parts in various stages of assembly. And we, 
I think we've got about 2000 in the queue right now that we're processing through. Uh, but it's uh, for us, it's just been, like I said, very inspirational and to have the have the support of the community and to be able to help our healthcare workers and even our essential workers like our our local transit authority and uh, and our retirement communities. Um, it's really put like it's put some oomph into into making for a difference and not just hanging around the shop all the time. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, it's really cool that you guys have like this really cool work process, like the workflow down. Um, have yeah. you guys thought of like documenting that, like when things calm a little bit? We've been working with Nation of Makers um, to oh, okay. to help help with their outreach. Uh, they they have worked on um, doing what you've just described, getting groups, small groups that have found success. Um, okay. And for us, it was really sustainability. So we we mm. actually set up a nonprofit and and okay. built a built a, a business around this specifically, so that we could maintain funding, keep mm. keep the lights on, and, and okay. really build build towards the end of COVID, and not just making something for making something. And yeah. and it's it's going well. Uh, our thing right now is uh, I think a lot of people didn't plan on it going this long and yeah. so you know it's it's a year ago we were, we were trying to convince folks that we have to stick it out now we're we're looking at how do how do we stick it out and how do we keep keep uh keep moving forward with this project uh we're, we're hoping and we're already putting plans in place to to pivot what we're doing here uh to going back to what we originally wanted to do at the beginning of 2020, which was uh, build a STEM space here and to, um, to teach local, local middle school, high school, and, and adults, um, students, uh, how to 3D print, how to do machine learning, how to, how to build robotics, including, uh, I think I've got one over here. We've been working on this. We're getting involved with the Ducky Town project out of MIT. So we've been building little, uh, and there it is. Rover is. Just spots yeah. with, the, with the Jetson Nano oh, tops nice. on them and everything. So um, we're hoping to be able to get a program like that going, maybe virtually by the end of the year, so that we can, instead of doing what we want to do, is bringing people in, we can start pushing ourselves out to to YouTube and uh, and other forums. Oh, that's excellent! Thank you for all that. Yeah, uh, please post the it. link to, to the makerspace and all the I other. In the Discord, yeah, this is yeah, awesome. Yeah, if you if you <laughs> use the hashtag make it through on Facebook, you'll find our stuff. And uh, goodworksociety.org is our is our is our umbrella organization where we're coordinating with uh, groups in North Carolina, here in Virginia, um, even down in Atlanta. So um, check that out. But it's great, and I just awesome. want to thank you guys. Like, I got into three D printing five years ago, and having a Having having advocates like you out there that make it fun and and you know Wednesday I sneak out of my Zoom meetings and like come and watch oh. come and watch your your three D show so, um, I appreciate so that. really thank you so much and, and keep that up. Oh, thanks so All much. Right. It's what gets us through it actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks so much. Yeah, Absolutely. definitely post the links. Yeah, and be, we'll you know feel free to stop by with more stuff, more projects and things. Yeah, totally. Oh yeah. Thanks so much. We got, we got a pie game in here with friends playing with. I'm sure we'll have something to show with that too. <laughs> oh, totally. <Excellent. laughs> thanks all so right. much. All right. Thank you, guys. And I think that's going to be it for the show and tell. Thank you all for showing it and telling all the awesome projects you guys are working on. Uh, don't go anywhere. We got like two minutes till uh, Ask an Engineer is coming right up. Lots of cool new products, all the news going on in the community, and a lot more uh, like secret stuff that Lamar and PT are working on. Can we see that? More so Pico definitely, tips. <laughs> Pico. All right, folks. Stay on by about one, two minutes. All right. We'll catch you guys later. See you. Bye.